My mom sent me this Catholic video trying to convince me to not be trans because she disagreed with me. Didn't you email me this a while ago? Why does this guy look like Timmy Turner's father? Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. Okay, those of you who are men who are watching this, those of you who are women who are watching this, women, what does it feel like to be a woman? Guys, what does it feel Pretty gay, I imagine. Feel like to be a man? Flip it around and say, men, do you have any idea what it feels like to be a woman? And women, do you have any idea what it feels like to be a man? No, the reality is, of course- So wait, hold on. Right off the bat, this is pretty dumb. Uh, wait, does he think every single woman and every single man would give the same answer to what it feels like to be a woman and a man? Does he- wait, is he under the impression that everyone would have the same answer to that? What if a woman's definition of what it mean, what it feels like to be a woman feels really, really close or overlaps with what a man's individual definition for what it feels like to be a man is? Like, there's not even like an objective answer to this. We're literally talking about how people feel, right? Like, well, what does that even mean, you know? That's, that's a pretty bad opening argument. Of course, we don't. We have no idea what it feels like to be a member of the opposite sex. No, no, no. We don't know what it feels like to be... This is a very funny frame to pause on. We don't know what it feels like to be anybody other than ourselves. I don't know what it feels like to be a man for another man, either. Like, I don't know what another man feels in that regard. So it's not like that, like that it, it has nothing to do with sex or gender. That's just like the, that's the qualia gap. You know, you can't know what a person is. All we have, all we have, this is crazy. All we have is gender stereotypes. Here's what I mean. Um, no, that's it. That's the limit of your capacity to empathize with women. Women be shopping. What, what does that even mean? Like we, we listen to other people and we try to get a, an idea of how they feel about something and we'll never like exactly no but we can get a good feel for it Bosh, he has empathy he knows what a 12 year old boy feels like <laughs> sorry that was good well done there are stories about you know here's the long, young boy and his parents say well you know we're treating him like a girl he really is a girl because he identifies as a girl why wait 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 what 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 okay yeah this video is from like 2015 so this like this video would have come out just when transgender people were invented. Okay, hold on. That, that all came out of nowhere. Okay, hold on. Young boy and his parents say, well, you know, we're treating him like a girl. He really is a girl because he identifies as a girl. Why? Well, okay. So the, so the parents are, are respecting the social transition of a young trans girl. Okay. That's, yeah, right. Well, you know, ever since he was little, we didn't have to tell him he liked dolls more than like truck, more than he liked trucks. He liked um, uh, dresses more than he liked jeans. He liked pink more than he liked blue. And you think of that, wait a second, that's how you know that your little boy is actually a girl? No, no. the only way you know is if your little boy says so. Like, it is definitely true that transgender women tend to act and, you know, think in ways more comparable to cisgender women in a lot of cases than they do cisgender guys. So there's that. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's a correlative thing. You know, that's not the reason why. Right? Like, there are plenty of trans women who are pretty, like, butch or tomboy or whatever. Right? Wait, not tomboy. That's... Yeah, tomboy. Yeah. T the term tomboy always confuses me. Because he just happens to like things that are traditionally associated with girls? No. See, this is very common conservative rhetoric. The idea that over-enthusiastic parents are, like, forced transgendering their children because they see their kid pick up a Barbie once and they're like, Oh, it's a little girl. Little girl, you're a girl now. And, like... This doesn't happen. This just doesn't happen. Okay? This does this just this just doesn't happen, you know? It's it's been like 10 years of this culture war talking point and I still struggle to think of a single example even from the craziest people of this exact thing happening, you know? It's just something that's arbitrary. Skirts that women wear skirts is arbitrary. That women play with dolls or over trucks is arbitrary. Hold on, wait. If you really think it's arbitrary then, Mr. Priest man, uh, you shouldn't have any issue whatsoever with cross-dressing, but something tells me that you have opinions about what clothing men and women ought to wear, because, you know, all priests do. Like, literally, like, yeah, you absolutely do. So you can't, you can't play the it's arbitrary game, but then also have, like, uh, you know, absolutist, uh, essentialist takes on, on, uh, you know, gender stereotypes. In fact, I think about this. My, one of my older sisters, 
Growing up, she was what you would call back in the day, since I'm old man, what they call back in the day, they called her a tomboy. Why? I think people still use this term. Again, this is another, the, so the implication of what he's saying here is nobody uses this term anymore because now you would just call them a trans man. Like, that's what's happening. Like, every time a girl is a little bit boyish growing up or likes to, like, I don't know, play in the dirt or, or wear, like, pants or whatever, it's like, ah, wow, a trans man, you know, that we, we still use the term tomboy. Because she loved hunting, she loved fishing, she loved, she was incredible at sports. The field, the med, the, she's a medicine, uh, in medicine right now, she's a doctor. Her, the field that she's in right now is, is a field traditionally associated, dominated by men. Her okay. husband is a stay-at-home dad. Now, okay. she is hard charging, she does a lot of, she takes, uh, she's really smart, she, she takes the bull by the horns, all these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Things that are masculine traits. Now, wait, is she a, is she a man? No. No? Uh, no. And nobody would say so. Cool. Yeah, nobody. We're arguing. We're we're boxing shadows right now. Nobody would say that. That's those are just you know. It's just that is what it is. You know. Okay. Oh, why? Because she's a woman. She's the mom of her kids. Well, that's a great argument. Is she a man? No, because she's a woman. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I guess. Well, can't argue with that one. I guess. Um. Yeah. No. Again, like the idea that people are like aggressively prescribing transgenderedness, transness. Onto people, it's just not true. You aggressively prescribe cisness, right? Like even in a hypothetical that you cooked up with a young trans girl, you kept calling her him. So like you're you're the one making prescriptions against the beliefs of the people you're talking about. My brother-in-law, he's patient, he's kind, he's gentle with his kids. Stay-at-home dad. Traditionally, Homo. things associated with women. How do we know he's not a woman? Well, because he looks at his body. His body reveals that he's actually actually a man the body that's interesting okay so now we're doing the like um sex and like gender doesn't exist it's only sex uh but again remember conservatives don't believe this because if conservatives did believe there was no such thing as gender and only sex they would be actual gender abolitionists they would be like um like sex essentialist gender abolitionists and they wouldn't have any opinions whatsoever on any arbitrary gender stereotypes people do or don't fill but there's not a single conservative on earth who is like that every single conservative who pretends they don't believe in gender has very strong opinions on the downfall of masculinity from men wearing feminine clothing or from this or from that or from tattoos or what women should be like or what men should be like that has nothing to do with their biology so it's it's a complete like now I think in a lot of cases, they just don't know how deep that rabbit hole goes because they're not very sociologically curious. Like, they're just kind of dumb. They, they, would, they would be like, okay, so why then, if gender doesn't exist, are women expected to wear these clothes and men expected to wear these clothes? They'd be like, well, that's because how it is, you know? I, I think that a lot of them just, like, don't think about it, you know? Here's the crazy thing, mm -hmm. is if my perception... Oh, also... If you think, so again, we've talked about this so many times before, but when it comes to like biology, hormones change your biology, right? Everyone knows that. When you're a zygote, when you're gestating in the womb, you're basically like a clump of stem cells and your growth and development are informed by uh, the hormones that wash over your body, your susceptibility to those hormones. And then later in life, your um, uh, genetic makeup, like XX, XY, whatever, um, inform the hormones your body self washes with throughout life and during puberty, especially. So we're the same basic clump of cells to begin with. That's why males and females are biologically analogous. For example, the clitoris and the head of the penis, uh, the the testes and the ovaries. The fact that males have nipples, even though there's no biological need for them. Males not only have nipples, we have uh, milk ducts, the same that females do. Uh, in fact. Trans women often can lactate because once you get enough estrogen in you, it activates the uh, that part of the body. You know, we're 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 basically the same thing that just takes two branching paths. You know, two different upgrade trees where women get better at crying and men get better at s building civilization and being cool. You know, so it's like it's it. People act like they're different species. It's just not cis men can also lactate. Yes, that is true that there are conditions that can cause cis men to lactate. That is true, right? Like, you don't even need to be, like, trans or whatever. Like, like th that can happen, yeah. So with all that in mind, like, okay, there are sex differences between men and women, obviously. That's the definition of, of the se Right, that's the definition of the sex, right? But, um, what would it take to bridge that gap? So, if XX and XY chromosomes inform the hormones that wash over your body, which determine how your body changes, what would happen if two different people 
had XX and XY chromosomes, right? One of them is a cis woman and one of them is a trans woman, right? The XY person, the trans woman, has, takes hormone blockers when they're young and then takes uh, estrogen never goes through male puberty and ends up experiencing the same like bath of feminizing hormones that a cis woman does. Now, in a lot of ways, biologically, that trans woman is much, 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 much more like a cis woman than a cisgender man. For example, when it comes to stuff like risk of breast cancer or prostate cancer, susceptibility to certain medicines that affect the heart, stuff involving bone and muscle development, this trans woman is biologically more like a cis woman than a cis man. And you would want to tell your doctor all of this. If you came into a doctor's office after, as a trans woman, having not gone through a male puberty and having been on hormones your whole life, basically, and you say, yep, I'm a man, XY chromosomes, yep, that wouldn't tell the doctor very much at all. I mean, your genitals certainly wouldn't function and operate like a cisgender man's would. Your entire body would be awash with chemicals that make it act differently to how, say, my body goes through, right? Like it's, it's so the idea that sex is immutable, factually incorrect. Just, it's just straight wrong. It's not even like an analysis or a perspective thing. It's just straight wrong. The gender stuff, that's social theory, okay? You can have like different takes, you know, you can be inconsistent, but empirically wrong, eh, you know, like it's mostly a matter of what brings people the most utility, what helps people the most. When it comes to the idea that sex is immutable, straight wrong. Everyone gets me, right? We're all clear? Okay. Also, what would it take to actually change the sex of a person in the mind of a guy like this, right? What if you had a machine that didn't change the chromosomes, but changed everything that the chromosomes would themselves change? So you had a person who was XY, but had a vagina, a functioning womb, breasts, so on and so forth, right? There are people like that, right? The XXY development. At what point would you say a person's sex has changed? Now, in my personal opinion, for a lot of conservatives, especially one, especially men of the cloth, I think that a lot of them believe that the soul is male or female, and that even if you could enter a machine that would rewrite your body down to the chromosomal level, like every atom of your body restructured, I think they would still say that you are fundamentally the sex that you were born as, you know? I, I think they believe that, even though the idea of a soul having a sex or a gender is insane, insane, you know. But then again, there were a lot of white supremacists who believed that black and white people had different kinds of souls, too, right? There were like biblical scholars, scholars, right, back during the relevant time period who would argue that, you know, it's just kind of like a better soul and a lesser soul. Now, that, that, that's, that's insane, right? Like any kind of biblical logic, that's insane. But, you know, didn't stop them from saying it, so. It's literally abiblical to say a soul is gendered. Yeah, well, it doesn't stop them, so whatever. All right, just moving on. It doesn't match up with reality. It's not reality that has to change. It's my perception of reality that has to change. We all know this when it comes to, I'm sure some of you have this experience of people in your life who have suffered from something like another kind of body dysmorphia, something like anorexia. There's a young woman that I remember working with years ago. It was painful. She was in the hospital because she was so thin. She was 98 pounds, but she still perceived herself as being fat. Say, no, I still feel fat. I still feel fat. Like, wait a second, but your perception and reality is off. So the implication of this is that trans women look down between their legs and think that they don't see a penis or whatever. It's basically a way of saying that trans women are delusional, but that's not the case. Anorexia and bulimia are complicated and they can cause feelings that are comparable to being trans but fundamentally there is a body perception mismatch with trans people there is a body identity mismatch those are two different things an anorexic person might delusionally look in a mirror and see fat where it just is not present they might look at like skin and bones and think like oh my god you're so fat wow that's looking in a mirror and being deluded about the physical empirical visual evidence that you are seeing whereas if you're trans you know trans people aren't unaware of the fact that they're trans the comparable like the the actual comparison would be if there was a a cisgender man who then identified as a woman and was a trans woman and then thought they were a cis woman but that's not what we're talking about you know that's not that's not that's not what we're talking about
So it's not reality that has to change, it's your perception of reality that has to change. That's an act of love. In fact, there's this other version of body dysmorphia, this kind of misperception of... Again, this is the difference between dysmorphia and dysphoria. That's why dysmorphia refers to morph, the actual, like, shape of your body, and dysphoria doesn't, because dysmorphia is a misperception of your actual physical proportions, and dysphoria is about uh, your feeling about how your body is. Those are different things. Of one's body, it's called BIID. It stands for Body Integrity Identity Disorder. And what BIID is, is it's when someone looks at like saying something like their hand and says, this isn't my hand. This is, it feels foreign to me, or these legs feel foreign to me. In fact, there was a documentary I watched a number of years ago about a woman who she perceived herself to be a paraplegic. She perceived herself that her legs didn't work. Again, this is a mismatch between how you uh, perceive your body to be and what your body actually is. It's a disconnect between empirical, like verifiable bits of information, not a dissatisfaction with the way that your body is. And so that's how she lived her life. She got around in a wheelchair. She transferred herself from her bed to a wheelchair with like a, you know, a pulley system kind of a thing. Okay. The reality is her legs do work. Wow, that's, that's very helpful. You should tell her that. Huh. It's, it's, I like this comparison especially too because I like the implication from this guy being that like, you know, if you just sat this person down, not that she's not always sitting, and I had gave her a good old talking to, you know, you could, you could, yeah, you, did you know you do have legs? Like, man, I, it, you, there has to be some kind of like really interesting like thing broken in your brain to not have use of your legs when you do have use of your legs. I mean, that's not just like, that's not just a person being like deluded or whatever. That's like a serious mental, like there's a brain thing going on there that you, you would need like medication or, or like, I don't, I don't even know. Right. Like, but it's not as simple as just looking at a person going like, uh, you're delusional. You trans legger, trans leg, trans leg individual. Uh, you have legs, you know? Uh, yeah. Her perception was off. And so what happens is this, when someone's suffering from this kind of body dysmorphia by BIID comes in and says, Doctor, this is not my hand. It's not my real hand. It's like going mute. It's likely stress and will resolve with time and patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After trauma, there are people who um who can't speak. They go mute. But, but they can speak, right? Like the 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 muscles and everything you need to speak, like those still work. Um, they just can't speak. You know? There's just a, a, a mental block or a barrier that's preventing them from doing that. You know, there's even psychosomatic blindness. Oh, yeah, everything goes through the brain, right? And the brain is fallible. It's pretty crazy, huh? And can you amputate it? Doctors around the world are instructed, N no, that's actually their hands. Don't amputate a healthy limb. The percep their perception is wrong, not the reality. But when it comes to sex, we all lose our brains and we all lose our minds. Again, these, these, aren't, these aren't comparable. A, a, a transgender woman doesn't look down at her body and see a biologically female, like, cisgender body or whatever, like, just by virtue of identity or self-perception. That's not what that means. Lines. And a man goes in or... This is, this is such a common trope with, like, transphobia, where they keep pretending that all trans people are, like, juvenile nitwits who just don't understand, like, oh, there's a difference between perception and reality? Obviously, they know that, otherwise they wouldn't transition. Why would trans people fight so aggressively for the right to access hormones if they already thought that they were exactly the sex that they want to be? Like, why? how does that track at all? Why would they care at all about getting hormones and surgery and facial feminization or facial masculinization? Blah, 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 blah. Why would they care about any of that bullshit if they thought like, oh, well, I am a woman, therefore I am a cis female. Blah. Like, what, like what, it's, it's totally inconsistent, you know? It, it makes no sense. Yeah, they think these people simply need the light of Christ. They think they can just argue a trans person out of it. When has a trans person ever been like convinced they weren't trans? You know, when has that, when has this ever happened? You know, you would have better luck convincing an anorexic person to stop thinking of themselves as fat. And good luck with that, by the way. You probably, hmm, you probably better not to waste your time with that particular approach, you know, just be there for them, okay? But like, yeah, just, it's, it's so, it's so dumb. This has 1.5 million views, by the way, in case you thought we were watching some, like, tiny edge case video, you know? Woman goes in and says, Doctor, these external genitalia are not mine. They're not actually a part of me. I no, wait, no, wait, no, 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 no. I have literally never heard a trans person say this. This is completely made up. What the f*** do you mean? I have never heard a trans person say this. Not mine, literally not a part of me. Who says that? What?
What, when, when, when does that language come up? It's they don't want them. And if a, per, if a trans person ever did say, these aren't mine, they mean it non-literally. They don't literally mean it's not a part of their body. Like, if, they, if they're saying it allegorically, it'd be, it'd be like a fat person going to a doctor and the doctor being like, yeah, you gotta lose weight. And the fat person being like, nuh uh. Like, like, or sorry, they're, they're, they're like grabbing their belly, be like, yeah, this isn't mine. Yeah, I'm, yeah, this ain't mine. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's just like a way of saying, like, I don't want it. Not like, like, it, they're not literally saying the belly doesn't exist, you know? We just ignoring the title of the video. Why would, yeah, the transgender question, I know. Yeah. It's, it, it's not meant in that way. Uh, th this is like no hatred but Christian love territory. This is an alt right dog whistling. You know, let, no, 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 no. Let's let's not blur together. This is this is just like a, a linguistic overlap here. Why not both? Because none none of this rhetoric represents like alt right degeneracy. Da da da. You know. Ironically, his argument in reverse makes sense. Um, yes, because trans people can get body dysmorphia uh, in addition to the dysphoria, but the dysphoria, okay, again, like, remember, dysmorph, morph refers to form, dysphoria is like euphoria, as in it refers to pleasure or state of being. Dysphoria means that you are unhappy with your body. Dysmorphia means that you don't accurately perceive the form of your body. That's why those, that's what, those two words mean different. That's why they get used differently, you know? Now they can overlap, right? Like it, that, that, they often overlap as a matter of fact, but they are still distinct. I perceive that they shouldn't be here. And apparently we're okay with Dr. Say. Wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Actually a part of me. I perceive that they shouldn't be here. What does that mean? I perceive that they shouldn't be here. What, who says that? They would just say, I don't want them here. I perceive that? That's such a weird, he's, he's like, twisting the language a trans person would say in a way that allows it to fit within the analogy you know like who how does when does this when is this used like i perceive my feeling that they shouldn't be here that doesn't make any sense and apparently we're okay with doctors saying okay well then we have sex reassignment surgery or gender reassignment surgery we can literally do this already for like other parts of our body right you can go in and get breast reduction or enlargement surgery you can get like facial surgeries of all kind there are so many cosmetic surgeries that a person can get where they're literally like yo make my make me look like the giga chad guy make my chin jut out please make me look like i've been mewing my whole life and you can do that and we don't call it like delusion or what uh that's biologically your jawline we just acknowledge it as like oh yeah well medical science allows us to change how we look cool like th nobody gives a shit about that you might think it's ill-advised and you can think it's ill-advised for trans people to get their um their gender affirming surgeries if you want you know i don't care like f okay you can think that if you want but like this level of 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 dishonest like ah well this is exactly the same as an anorexic person seeing a big gut when it's actually a flat belly, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And yet, that seems to be kind of covering over the real problem, just like amputating a health- Oh, now we're gonna get to like, it's it, it's like actually autism or whatever. Cis people will never call it what it is. It's also gender affirming care to get chin implants. Yes, 100%, absolutely. Cis people get gender affirming care more than trans people do. <laughs> All right, anyway, now we're gonna talk about how autism is what makes you think you're trans or whatever. And yet, that seems to be kind of covering over the real problem, just like amputating a healthy limb will be covering over the real problem. In fact, that's the conclusion that a guy named Dr. Hen Dr. Paul McHugh came to. He was the chief psychiatrist of Johns Hopkins Hospital. So this isn't like a, a crackpot doctor. This is the chief psychiatrist, ex-chief psychiatrist of Johns Hopkins. He dealt with a lot of these cases of people who identified as transgender. They saw themselves as a member of the opposite sex. Okay, again, the language here, a transgender person is a person who identifies as a, um, why is he X now? I know this doctor, so we'll get to that, don't worry. A transgender person is a, um, is a person who identifies as a gender other than that which they were assigned at birth. You don't identify as the other sex. A sex is a, well, a sex is what I'm having with your mom. Ooh, uh, sex is biological reality, but it's mutable biological reality, you know? But like, the, again, the language just betrays a total... Uh, maybe this guy doesn't want to cite McHugh. Hold on. McHugh was appointed to a lay panel assembled by the Roman Catholic Church to look into sexual abuse by Catholic priests. <laughs> oh, wait, it was assembled by the Catholic Church. So it was probably fine. It probably found like, yeah, no, actually. Um, actually, there has never been any rape in the Catholic Church, you know?
McHugh opposes allowing transgender people to receive gender-affirming surgery. He described homosexuality as an erroneous desire and supported California's same-sex marriage ban. Yeah, this guy definitely seems like he's being motivated by, like, scientific rigor and not by, you know... Scientists such as Dean Hammer argue McHugh uh, misrepresents scientific literature on sexual orientation and gender. This this guy, this guy is a... First of all, he's 92 right now. This guy was ancient when this came about. He, he was born, like... 1931 okay for one and for two uh this isn't a case of him being like an award-winning extremely acclaimed researcher in the field of transgender surgery this is a mega boomer uh a dinosaur a fossil who has been consistently homophobic and transphobic uh who just took those positions like it has it has nothing to do with like great scientific rigor you know he was appointed by President George W. Bush and the President's Council on Bioethics. Fascinating. In, in 1979, he shut down the gender identity clinic at John Hopkins, saying that another researcher found that most of the people he tracked down who had undergone this type of surgery, quote, were contented with what they had done and that only a few regretted it. But in every other respect, they were little change in their psychological condition. What? Oh, I'm sorry, doctor. That sounds like none of your f business. Excuse me? Wow, even back in 79, the people getting bottom surgery were like, yeah, low regret rates. But he's like, uh, no, you might have a low regret rate, but I still don't think you're happy enough. I think we should stop doing this, you know? They had much the same problems with work, relationship, and emotions as before. Why wouldn't they? What? Like, literally, like, oh, yeah, so even 45 years ago low regret rate for bottom surgery. And the bottom surgeries that you got back then were not as good as the ones you get today, okay? Trust me on that. Um, but still, 45 years ago, he's like tra like tracking down a bunch of trans people, going like, um, uh, are you actually happy? And they're like, no, I don't regret my surgery. And they're like, okay, but you actually happy? Are you actually happy? Like, this guy's just hateful. He has said like medical treatment for trans youth is like performing liposuction on an anorexic child and described post-op trans women as caricatures of women. Mm, this sounds like a this sounds like a big medical opinion, you know? This guy sounds like a very trustworthy doctor. He definitely seems like he's saying all of this uh, as a, a consequence of like informed medical research and not just being hateful while also happening to be a doctor. You might as well take the opinion of like Auschwitz doctors, seriously, you know, like everyone with a doctor, like uh, the most prestigious doctor in Germany in the 40s, like, mm, I don't know about that one guy. I don't know if being a doctor is enough to like validate every opinion that you have, you know, uh, he believed the uh, autogynephilia uh, stuff, classic, the classic meme. He characterized trans people as mentally ill. The Southern po Poverty Law Center described the American College of Pedi uh, Pediatricians. Let me see. A socially conservative advocate group of pediatricians and other healthcare professionals. They're against abortion rights and against queer, gay, and trans rights, promoting conversion therapy and purity culture. So there you go. So this guy joined a hate group. So yeah, none of his none of his opinions on trans people were informed by medicine. He was just hateful. That's it. Just hateful. He promoted Ray Blanchard's theory of autogynephilia. He would have been a great TTTT poster in a different time. Nice. He was featured in a 2017 Netflix documentary, The Keepers, for his role in the defense in the 1995 trial Jane Doe et al. versus A. Joseph Mascal et al., which was a case involving the sexual abuse of two women at the hands of a Catholic priest, Father Joseph Mascal. So, th so while this guy wasn't, like, joining hate groups to, um... Uh, 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 to uh, preach hatred of, like, queer people or whatever. He was also defending Catholic priests against rape accusations. Phenomenal stuff. And he's a practicing Catholic? Wow. According to a 2002 New York Times article, he's a Democrat who describes himself as religiously orthodox, politically liberal, and culturally conservative. What does that mean? Politically liberal and culturally conservative? A believer in marriage in the Marines, a supporter of institutions and family values. If this guy is not too old, for his brain to not work anymore. If he can still think, he's probably in the MAGA crowd. He's 92, though. He's out of the public life. Like, he hasn't done anything lately, to my knowledge. But this guy's mostly known now for being, like, just a, a hateful piece of shit. So anyway, let's go back to him being cited positively. And with sex reassignment surgery, he said, yes, yeah, some of these patients experienced satis a satisfaction of that reassignment. Nope, the majority did. Low regret rates. But they were still disturbed. They were still hurting. 
No, he didn't use the term disturbed and hurting. He said, at least as quoted by the Wikipedia article, that they still had problems in their life, which is pretty normal after any surgery, because surgery doesn't magically fix all the problems in your life. And he came to this conclusion, he said, we had to stop doing sex reassignment surgery because, he says, we found that, um... Did not find. This was not the product of scientific research. This was just him using his authority as the head of John Hopkins to shut it down. This was not the product of, like, medical research. He found that producing satisfied but a still troubled patient seemed an inadequate reason for surgically amputating normal- I'm sorry, not your f bit a satisfied patient? Uh, sorry, they had they still had life troubles after the successful surgery that they don't regret. Therefore, we're shutting down the clinic and barring. Gonna mention him joining a hate group? Gonna mention him being against gay marriage and abortion rights? Again, this guy, this is, the whole purpose of this is like, um, whitewashing this guy's crimes. Uh, you know, with the implication that everything he did was the product of medical research and not just, like, being hateful. Normal organs. Because I could change these external factors, but the reality is... Uh, you mean like breast reduction surgery? At the heart of everything, I'm still a man or I'm still a woman. Uh, sorry. Even though you got your giant fat milkers reduced in size, uh, you're still biologically a big titty bitch. And, uh, frankly, even though you're satisfied the result with the results of your breast reduction surgery, I don't think that you're... Sa but you still have life problems. You still, you still have relationship troubles. So I don't know if your satisfaction with your giant big milky mommer breast reduction surgery is, uh, is, is enough to justify the removal of healthy uh, organ tissue. And when it comes down to it, is that's, that's, that's the message of love. This is not a message of judging. This is not a message of, of criticizing. This is Except he joined a hate group and thought trans people were mentally ill and wanted to ban gay marriage and wanted to ban abortion rights. You know, just, yeah, it was totally no hate but Christian love, baby. Not even a, a message of trying to blame anyone or make them a monster. No, absolutely not. These are people who are hurting anyone. The people in yep, my no, no hate but Christian love. Oh, we don't hate you even though we want to take your rights away, queer people. Even though we want to take your rights away. Even though we think that you're mentally ill and shouldn't be given access to um, things like marriage or like the same medical care that other people could benefit from. You know, we love you, actually. This is us loving you. My life who have been hurting from anorexia or any kind of the kind of body dysmorphia or even this kind of sense of identifying with members of the opposite gender. Oh, now it's ge oh, now it's gender. You have no idea what you're talking about, dog. You're not even getting your own dog whistles or miscommunications correct. Now it's gender, not sex? All of that comes down to someone who's hurting. So what do we hold to do as Catholics? Well, we don't have to judge because no one's calling us a judge and no one wants us to judge. We don't need to judge. What we're called to do is hold to That's so true. That's the main thing that Catholics are known for not doing. Judging people. That's so... Uh, my apologies. I grew up in Los Angeles around like five million Latin people, okay? Like, yeah, that's that's so true. That's right. Why would ca Catholics judging? What? Ah, come on. Come on. Come on. What are you into? Wow, you would really judge me, a little birthday boy? You wouldn't judge somebody with glasses, would you? A walk with people. I mean, that's the, one of the best things we do as Catholics is we walk with people. We listen to them. Flashing back to my out lesbian friend crying to our high school ethics teacher, telling her we didn't have time this semester. Yeah, it's it literally, it's just like they judge behind your back. They judge to your face, man. They're so f hateful. We hear what they're really saying, and then we're able to just not have to yell at anyone and not have to criticize anyone. Just we will take away their like medical rights, though, and their legal rights. And we will deny them surgeries that are objectively making them happy, even according to our own research. Can you imagine how frustrating it must have been for that dipshit doctor to go out of his way to go track down recipients of bottom surgery, even back in 1979, to find that all, like basically all of them were happy with their surgery? You know that if there had been any significant number of people who weren't, he would have misrepresented that and gone hog wild with it. Look, they don't even benefit from this. But he couldn't. Even 45 years ago, that mother still had to grit his teeth and go, okay, it seems like they, it seems like they're happy with their surgeries, but they're, they're actually really upset inside, you know, like, uh, it, it, yeah, nothing changes. Oh, actually, hold on. Nothing does change. You know, what was that? What was that? What was that study that came out literally today? That's like fake or whatever, because it, it disagrees with the conservative opinion. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Survey of over 90,000 trans people shows vast improvement in life satisfaction after transition. All of this is fake and doesn't count. This doesn't count. 
Uh, something something double blind study. Something something. Why didn't you find ninety thousand trans people who haven't transitioned to compare it to? What what do you mean longitudinal studies where people get happier consistently over and over and over again after transitioning are an indication of that? What ninety thousand? That's such a small sample size. What do you mean? The overwhelming majority of them still report more life satisfaction after having transitioned. Uh, not valid. Fake. Fake. Not real. Not real. Fake somehow. Yeah, I bet it was written in San Francisco. So it's biased. It's nitpicky and biased. Bye bye. Why? Why couldn't it have been ninety-one thousand? Why not a hundred thousand? Come on, God willing, anonymous platypus. I hope my profanity doesn't get in the way of a good point made. All right, let's finish this. Just be able to say, "Let me walk with you." I don't have to give you what you want in order to love you, but I am called to walk with you in order to love you. Oh, I that's yep. No rights. No medical care. No support. No recognition. You're mentally ill. You're a pervert. But I'll walk with you. Uh, wouldn't you like to walk with me, a person who hates you and wants to take away your rights? That's why it's easy for me to say this on a video, to say, like, here, we're called to do this. But what really happens is this. When Catholics, when those who belong to Jesus are willing to get into the messiness of someone's, you know... Wouldn't a Catholic believe everyone belongs to... Maybe this is like a linguistic thing. I've heard different religious people say different things. Whatever. Someone's brokenness, someone's wound. It doesn't matter what it is. Listen to them. To love them and walk with them. That's what we're really called to do. And when it comes to Bruce Jenner, when it comes to anyone else... Bruce Jenner, because that, because th this was 2015. That was the, that was the thing back then, yeah. It comes to any the people in your life and in my life. The best thing we can do is not simply share the truth with them, but it's also to walk with them. Thank you, that's great. All right, that's enough. 1.8 million views. As a Catholic who struggled with gender dysphoria since I was a kid. Oh, man. I never transitioned, and it is incredibly hard. Dog, I've got bad news for you. For cisgender people, not transitioning isn't incredibly hard. I'm really, really sorry that... I'm sorry you had to find out this way. As an ex-trans identifying individual who is working through her healing and glorifying our father, I wanted to say thank you for this video. Nice. And people say this is a religion of hate. True! Cis people don't have these thoughts. Yeah. You know, half the reason why so many gay boys uh, fantasize about straight guy is because fully in like a lot of the world and in a lot of Catholic countries especially, I feel, fully like one in five guys are repressing some kind of homosexual thought. You mother are so repressed, you know? I feel like the, 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 the Catholic church is holding back a tide, like a goddamn, like a, a, a dam, you know, of... One day, like, they're all, it's, it, it's, everyone is just going to be like, yep, okay, it's time. Like, we're transitioning, we're gay now, whatever. The floodgates are opening. I wonder if you could make the argument that repression makes people more gay. It's just, it's so evil that, like, literally millions of people around the world are living their lives having to fight back feelings of being trans or gay or whatever. Uh, you know, it's so, it's, uh, it, and, and, and the most sinister thing that religion does is that it convinces you that it's in your best interest to thank them for repressing you. Like, it would be one thing if you were gay and in the closet in, like, Russia or something, where you know you're gay and you know the government's being a bastard to you. But, like, the, the, the nice addition of religion is that they can make it seem like they're helping you through diseased feelings, you know? What's worse, a real Catholic or a fake Catholic? A fake Catholic by far. Uh, fake Tradcath, um, like, recent converts are all just Nazis. Uh, real Catholics, in a lot of cases, are actually more progressive than the, like, Protestant bloc in this country. Difficult as it may be to uh, get that sometimes. The het mass to gay homo pipeline is literally Max Dilemma from It's Always Sunny. Yeah, and they, and they all knew from, like, season three. Real Catholics are certainly more boring. Yeah, because it's just normal life to them. They don't have to, like, LARP as some kind of Space Marine.